everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be jumping into my first impressions of the new powder that was just launched from Westman Atelier. Several months ago, I did a full face of Westman Atelier, and there was some products that I really liked, and there was other products that I just didn't really love. And I didn't feel like they some of the products fully justified the price. I was a little bit on the fence on getting this, but, I posted a post on Community Center asking you guys if you guys would be interested in seeing a review on this, and so many of you guys said yes, so I just decided, guess what? I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. I'm gonna talk about it and share my thoughts with you guys, and that is what we're going to get into today. So this is what the powder looks like. It has this gorgeous, very reflective, packaging. It's very hard to show you what it looks like just because it's so reflective, but the one thing that I do like about it, even though it's super reflective, it doesn't show fingerprints like most mirrored type of products do. So I kind of appreciate that about this powder. So let's get into the details on this. So this is called the Vital Pressed Skincare Powder. It is a supercharged skincare actives micro milled into setting powder Form. This powder retails for $75, comes in five different shade variations, and this powder is five grams worth of product, which is 0.17 ounces. Whew, a very pricey powder, but Westman Atelier is a very luxurious, expensive brand. So I kind of feel like the price is kind of on par for the overall brand. It comes in this box. This is their typical packaging. It also has this really cute little pouch that says Westman Atelier that it slips down into. Like I mentioned, there are five different color variations. So you can get translucent, which is invisible. You can get pink bubble, which is a brightening powder for light and medium skin. You can get cream, which is sheer light to medium complexions. Then you can get shade Dune. It is a sheer powder for tan complexions. And then you can get Cafe, which is also a sheer powder for deep complexions. So I do like that there are five different shade variations in this powder. That is really nice. So let's get into the details on this. So they're naming this powder the Vital Pressed Skincare Powder. And the reason for that is they are saying that it is supercharged with skincare actives that are micro milled into the setting powder form. Sweep away shine, set your makeup, and protect skin's natural radiant dimension. Okay, lots of claims here. Ultra sheer and feathery light, this powder instantly smooths, pours, evens tones, and sweeps away shine. A skin's defense shield complex is made with vitamin C and probiotics that shields from free radicals while protecting from blue lights. Over time, Preston Actives help to control sebum and refine skin's texture. Works like makeup, acts like skincare for the ultimate how is my skin this good effect. It is clean, talc-free, and also silicone-free. I know that a lot of you guys really like a talc-free powder, so that was what kind of prompted me to go ahead and get this, try it out for you guys, and share my thoughts. So that's all the deets on it. Let's go ahead and jump into the try-on. I'm gonna try on the powder, kind of give you guys my first impressions of it, to tell you guys what I like about it and what I may not like about it, and then we will get into my final thoughts, so I will see you guys then. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this new powder from Westman Atelier. Right now I'm actually reviewing the new Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I finally got it after waiting for a minute. So I decided to review the powder kind of at the same time while I'm reviewing that because I'm getting ready to leave and today is my last day of filming. So I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and I'm also wearing my lipstick that I created with Christian Odette in the shade Bare Nectar on my face as blush. You guys know I love blush and I tried it on the other day as blush and I just fell in love. So that is what's on my face and I am ready to powder. So let's dive into this. I, I picked up the shade Creme. I don't know if you pronounce it cream or creme, but it has a little apostrophe, so it's probably creme, I don't know. Anyway, it comes in the standard packaging of Westman Atelier and it's very heavy 
And it, the packaging, I have to say, is really beautiful. That is what the packaging looks like. If I put it that way, you're just gonna see lights. But you can see just how gorgeous the packaging is. It's very reflective, but it is really pretty to look at. So this is what the color looks like. And this might be a little bit too light for me. I didn't really know what color to get, to be completely honest with you. It feels really silky. So it says that it's really finely milled. In my experience, powders that are too finely milled they emphasize my wrinkles, especially like right here before I powder. You can see that I got some wrinkles right there. Like, I mean, all of us kind of start to get more wrinkles right here, especially as we age. And this is the place where I like to put the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Airbrush Flawless Powder because it kind of like smooths that area out and kind of calms down and those the emphasis of those wrinkles. In my experience, if I put a powder that's too finely milled on that area, it emphasizes. It makes the wrinkles look worse. I was a little bit concerned about it, but I can tell you this is really silky. It doesn't feel as thick as the Charlotte Tilbury powder. I would say it's silkier than the Charlotte Tilbury powder. So let's try it out. I'm gonna use this brush from Wayne Goss. I think this is called the airbrush or something like that. This is typically the brush that I use in this area. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of it like this. I'm gonna tap off and just kind of, ooh. Ooh, that's a pretty powder. Ooh, that's a pretty powder. I'm gonna put it like right here. I have to keep making sure, I have to keep looking in the monitor because sometimes my lens will wanna focus on the brush or my hand. It's a good lens, but it's like, it tends to focus on things I don't want it to focus on. This is a nice powder. And I am very picky with powders underneath my eyes. A lot of people loved this Shantakai powder. This one was too drying for me. It was just too heavy and too mattifying for me. And I mean, I keep it around, but I, it's, not, it's not one that I grab. I also have the one from Pat McGrath, this one right here. Let me feel the difference. This is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. And when I do this with my fingers, my fingers just slide because it's silky, right? The Westman Atelier A is silky, but it has a, th um, it grabs, it's got a grab to it. So it's not slipping off my fingers. I mean, you can kind of see, I have to force my fingers over this, I can just go like this and it just slides. This one is not really sliding as well. I'm just saying the difference basically at the end of the day. And I am very picky with powder. This so far is a really nice powder and I am not mad at the way this applied at all. That's it for the application of this powder. So far, just based on first impression, I like this powder and I typically know right away if I'm gonna like a finishing powder. It can't be too thick, it can't be too finely milled, it can't be too dry, it can't be too, I mean, there's just so many levels and we all have a lot of different preferences. So I think in my final thoughts, what I'll probably do is boil it down to what are my favorites and how this one compares. And if I feel like it's different from the other formulas to justify the splurge. So that's where we're at. So I'm gonna jump off of here and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts about this powder. It's been, I would say, maybe two or three hours since I applied it, and I'm already starting to see some of the shine kind of come back right here in this area. You will notice that this is the area that I actually applied the powder, and I loved the way that it looked, but I don't really feel like it's controlling shine. Still kind of um, had that smoothing effect on this area, but I don't feel like it holds up as far as controlling oils because I'm already starting to see my oils kind of pop through and it's only been like two or three hours since I applied the powder. Based on that observation, I would not get this solely based on controlling oils. So if that was what you were wanting from it, I don't think you're gonna get that. In the Westman Atelier's Powder Defense, this is my favorite finishing powder. This powder doesn't control my oils either for a long period of time. I would say maybe three, four, five hours tops. 
my oils do pop through this powder. So I don't use this powder to control oils either. So it all depends on what you're gonna use the powder for. What I like about the Charlotte Tilbury powder is that it smooths out those wrinkled areas and kind of gives me just a little bit of that smoothing effect to the skin. Kind of softens the wrinkles up is my best way to describe it. But there are some people that don't like this powder because they feel like it's a little bit too drying. So if this powder is a little bit too drying and you're st you're wanting something that is really wrinkle friendly, this one from Westman Atelier is very nice for that because the one thing that I didn't like about it is that it was able to kind of smooth out the area, but it's not too cakey. So it doesn't look like I have a bunch of makeup on in that area, which can happen sometimes, especially when I'm using like the Chantecaille powder. That one, if I get, if I apply even a little bit too much, it instantly looks cakey. Now, the thing that I will say is that my favorite talc-free finishing powder is the Kosas Cloud Set. This is one of my favorites. This is $34 and you get 9.5 grams worth of product, which is 0.33 ounces. So remember, this one from Westman Atelier is only five grams. This is almost double the size and a third of the price. The price difference is significantly different. And that's kind of what it is when it comes to luxury, right? Luxury makeup. You know, there's a lot of things. You're also paying for the packaging. So let's remember, this packaging is much more beautiful to look at than this. In fact, my lid has broke off of my Kosas powder. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you're somebody that doesn't care about the packaging and you're just wanting a nice talc-free powder, this one from Kosas is very nice. And this is one of the very few powders. I've mentioned this many times on my channel. This is one of the very few powders. I can't do it with my Charlotte Tilbury because it's too thick. This formula, I can take a dampened sponge. And I mean, I'm 43 years old. There is no way I can take a dampened sponge and dip it in like setting powder. You guys see all of the influencers doing that. I can't do that. It it looks like a cakey flipping mess on my skin. This is the first powder I was able to do this with. So taking a dampened beauty sponge, going into the powder like this, right? I mean, you've probably seen Jaclyn Hill do this with the Charlotte Tilbury powder, tapping off the, the excess and then going straight on to the wrinkles and wiping away those wrinkles like that. I mean, look at that, right? This powder from Kosas is the only powder that I have. And I have powders from Gucci. I have powders from, Sh from Chanel. I have this powder from Tom Ford I've tried it with. Oh no, 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 no. I don't like this powder, by the way. I have this one from Lara Mercier. This is from Givenchy. Great powder, but I could never dip a beauty sponge into it and do that with the Kosas powder, always. And it never looks cakey and gross. In fact, I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that this area completely got rid of the shine and it kind of filled that area in without being a cake face mess. And that Kosas powder is fantastic for that. Just for testing purposes, so this is where I did the Kosas. I'm gonna do it on the other side and I'm gonna go into this powder and let's see if this powder does it. So this sponge picked up way more powder from the Westman Atelier than it did the, the uh, Kosas. So kind of keep that in mind, especially because there's not very much product in here. So I'm gonna tap off the extra and let's put it right in that same area. And it, I can, st and I can do that with uh, the Westman Atelier without looking thick too. So again, very, very few powders that I have used, I've been able to do that with it, and that looks really good. And even, I don't know if I dare to say this, this side might look a little bit better, but I don't know that it's that much of a difference to say that the price is worth it. I'm going to dip my finger into the Westman Atelier powder, and then I'm going to dip my finger into the Kosas powder. So I have them both here and I'm just going to feel them for texture. Okay, so the Westman Atelier feels a little silkier. It does. It has, even though it does kind of have that thickness to it, it feels silkier 
than the Kosas. The Kosas is not quite as thick, and I think that's probably why the sponge picked up more product when I dipped it into the Westman Atelier powder versus the Kosas. Um, but overall, at the end of the day, how do I feel about the powder? Okay, let's just wipe away the price tag. Let's just throw that to the side. Let's throw away the packaging. Just the powder alone, how do I feel about it? This powder is a five out of a five. And I have not said that about all of the Westman Atelier products I've used. I think the iPods are a complete waste of money. You guys do not waste your money on those iPods. They might look cute in the packaging, but don't be fooled. I do not like the iPods. So for me, there are products that I like from Westman Atelier and there's other products that I just cannot stand. And there's products that I like, but don't feel like they're worth the money, right? So there's kind of that balance. I would say my two favorite products from Westman Atelier is the contour stick and the cream blushes. Those two are my absolute favorites. So others, I feel like I can kind of go without. So let me boil it down. This powder, all on its own, without the packaging, putting the price to the side, it's a great powder. It's a five out of five powder, in my opinion, for being a talc-free powder and just the over and the way that it lays over wrinkles and the way that it kind of lays over that textured area gorgeous it really is a nice powder it has a really nice mill to it it's not super finely milled where it just emphasizes and i mean there's so many great things about it deciding whether to purchase it kind of boils down to what are you buying it for are you buying it because you really love the packaging and you really love the brand or are you buying it because you really want a good talc-free powder? Because if you're only buying it because you want a really good talc-free powder, I recommend saving the money and getting the Kosas. The Kosas is a fantastic talc-free formula and you cannot go wrong with this formula. And it also has 10 shades, which is a nice variety of shades. So if it boils down to just strictly wanting to know which powder I like more, based on just looking in the mirror, and doing the little trick with the sponge. I have to admit, I feel like the Westman Atelier side doing that trick with the sponge looks a little bit less noticeable, but it's not that noticeable, and it's not that much of a difference to not use the Kosas and use the Westman Atelier. Now, because I've already got the Westman Atelier, will I use it? Absolutely, it's a nice powder. And it is a really good powder, it really is. It's a nice powder. But overall, I just, it all is going to boil down to what you wanna spend your money on. But if you're just coming to this video and you're wanting to know, is it a good powder? In my personal opinion, it's a great powder, it is. But do I personally feel like it's worth $75? Not necessarily, because the Kosas powder, in my opinion, is just as good of a formula, and it's talc-free, and it offers 10 shades versus five, and you almost get double the amount. Because here's the thing. I mean, the price difference is major. Kosas powder is $3.58 per gram. Westman Atelier is $15 a gram. It's not a mind-blowing powder, like the best powder I've ever used in my entire life type of thing, in order to kind of justify paying that much for it. But like I said, if you really love this packaging and you love luxury makeup, I know there's a lot of you out there because I love luxury packaging too. I do. I like it to look pretty on my counter, so I hear you. For those of you out there that are like that, I, I'm not judging you because I'm right there with you. We're rowing the same boat. But for those of you that don't really care about the packaging, you're just wanting a really good talc-free powder, I would pass on this and I would continue to use or buy the Kosas. So if you already have the Kosas, you definitely do not need this powder. That's just my opinion. Overall, it's a nice powder. Nothing negative to say about it other than that price. That price is pretty high. So those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below how many of you guys are really looking for a nice talc-free powder and are wanting to buy this. I'm really curious to hear, and if you are wanting to buy it, what are your reasons? I just love us all having a nice conversation talking about makeup. So sound off down below. Let's just talk about it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you, bye.